iOS gives us built-in tools for sending and receiving data from the internet. And if we combine it with codable support, then it's possible to convert Swift objects to JSON for sending, then receive back JSON to be converted back to Swift objects. Even better, when the request completes, we can immediately assign its data to properties in Swift UI views, causing our UI to update. To demonstrate this, we can load some example music JSON data from Apple's iTunes API and show it all in a Swift UI list. But we're going to whittle it down to just two types. A result will store a track ID, its name, and the album it belongs to, and the response will store an array of results. So start with this code. Struct response conforms to codable. Var results and array of result. Struct result also conforms to codable. Var track ID, int. Var track name, string. Var collection name, string. We can now write a simple content view that shows an array of results. At state var results equals array of result. List results id track id item in vstack alignment dot leading text item dot track name dot font dot headline text item dot collection name. That won't show anything at first because the results array is empty. This is where our networking call comes in. We're going to ask the iTunes API to send a list of all songs by Taylor Swift, then use JSON decoder to convert those results into an array of result instances. To make this easier to understand, let's write it in a few stages. First, here's the basic method stub. Please add this to the content view struct. func load data. We want that to be run as soon as our list is shown. So you should add this modifier to the list. Dot on appear perform load data. Inside load data, we have four steps we have to complete. First, creating the URL we want to read. Second, wrapping that in a URL request, which allows us to configure how the URL should be accessed. Third, create and start a networking task from that URL request. And fourth, handle the result of that networking task. We'll add those step by step, starting with the URL. This needs to have a precise format, itunes.apple.com, followed by a series of parameters. You can find the full set of parameters if you do a web search for iTunes Search API. In our case, we'll be using the search term Taylor Swift and the entity song, so add this to load data now. guard let URL equals URL string https colon slash slash itunes.apple.com slash search question mark term equals Taylor plus Swift, ampersand entered equals song, else, print invalid URL, return. Next, we have to wrap that URL into a URL request. Again, this is where we'd add different customizations to control the way the URL was loaded. But here we don't need anything, so this is just a single line of code. Add this to load it now. Let request equals URL request URL URL. Step three is to create and start a networking task with a URL request we just made. This can feel like a fairly odd approach when you first see it, and it has a particularly common gotcha, a mistake you'll make time and time again, and probably still make it a few years' time. I'll show you the code first, then explain what it does. Add this to load data. URL session dot shared dot data task with request data response error in then a comment saying step four dot resume URL session is the iOS class responsible for managing network requests. You can make your own session if you want to, but it's very common to use the shared session that iOS creates for us to use. Unless you need some specific behavior, using the shared session is fine. Our code then calls data task with on that shared session, which creates a networking task from a URL request, and the closure that should be run when the task completes. In our code, that's provided using trailing closure syntax, and as you can see, it accepts three parameters. Data is whatever data was returned from the request. Response is a description of the data, which might include things like what type of data it is, how much was sent, whether there was a status code, and more and error is the error that occurred. Now, cunningly, some of those properties are mutually exclusive, 
by which I mean that if an error occurred, then data won't be set. And if data was sent back, then error won't be set. This strange state of affairs exists because the URL session API was made before Swift came along. So there's no nicer way of representing this either or state. Notice the way we call resume on the task straight away. That's the gotcha. That's the thing you'll forget time and time again. Without it, the request does nothing and you'll be staring at a blank screen. But with it, the request starts immediately and control gets handed over to the system. It will automatically run in the background and won't be destroyed even after our method ends. When the request finishes, with an error or otherwise, step four kicks in. That's the closure inside the data task and is responsible for doing something with the data or error. In our case, we're going to check whether the data was set. And if it was, we'll try to decode it into an instance of our response struct, because that's what the iTunes API sends back. We don't actually want the whole response, just the results array inside it, so our list will show them all. However, there's another catch here. URL session automatically runs in the background, which means its completion closure will also run in the background. By background, I mean what's technically known as a background thread, an independent piece of code that's running at the same time as the rest of our program. This means a network request can be running and even take a few seconds without stopping our UI from being interactive. iOS likes to have all its UI work done on what's called the main thread, which is the one where the program was started. This stops two pieces of code trying to change the UI simultaneously. Because if all UI related work takes place in the main thread, then it can't clash. We want to change the results property of our view to be whatever was downloaded from the iTunes API, which in turn will update our UI. Now that might work great on a background thread because Swift UI is super smart, but honestly, it's just not worth the risk. It's a much better idea to fetch your data in the background, decode it from JSON in the background, then update the property on the main thread to avoid any potential for problems iOS gives us a very particular way of sending work back to the main thread, dispatchq.main.async. This takes a closure of work to perform and sends it off to the main thread for execution. As you can guess from its name, what's actually happening is it's added to a queue, a big line of work that's waiting for execution. The async part is short for asynchronous, which means our own background work won't wait for the closure to be run. We just add it to the queue and carry on working in the background. So put this final code in place of the step four comment. If let data equals data, if let decoded response equals, try question mark, JSON decoder dot decode response dot self from data. If we're here, it means we have good data, we should go back to the main thread. So we'll say dispatch queue, dot main dot async and update our UI there. Self dot results equals decoded response dot results. At this point, everything's good so we can exit. We'll do return. But if we're still here, it means there was a problem. So I'll say print fetch failed using error dot localized description nil coalescing unknown error. As you can see, that last print line uses optional chaining and the nil coalescing operator to make sure an error is printed if it exists, otherwise give a generic error. If you run the code now, you should see a list of Taylor Swift songs appear after a short pause. It really isn't a lot of code given how well the end result works. Later on in this project, we're going to look at how to customize URL requests so you can send codable data. But that's enough for now.